my lifestyle is heavily influenced by British culture. What I mean is, I have a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> I am addicted to orange juice. <laughs> with beets. <laughs> and if you love orange juice with beets, there's nothing more annoying than doing your grocery shop, getting home, only to realize you got the wrong kind of orange juice. <laughs> Because that is a dilemma. I mean, you could either return it to the store or you could be a man of principles and stand by your morals. I personally like to take it a step further and write a letter of complaint to the head office, highlighting <laughs> the fact the staff keep mixing all the orange juices in the orange juice aisle, which makes it harder, not just for me, but for all the orange juice consumers out there in the urban community. <laughs> You know? And I'm not some sort of nutty conspiracy theorist or anything, it's not job, right? I just feel like you never see that kind of incompetence going on in the cheese aisle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. At last night's gig, this young man came up to me after the show and he was like, bro, bro, I really love the job you did between the orange juices and cheese to highlight the economic differences between all social classes. You know that, bro? That was just a joke about orange juices and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've never been here. Apparently this is an iconic music venue in the heart of Brixton. It's one of the first nights they've done comedy, I hear. So this is pretty awesome. Has everyone seen the dogs up on the roof? Yeah? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Nice. Woof. Um, has everyone, everyone tried the roof dog beer? Yeah? There's probably also a, a, a beer here called Roof Dog to coincide with that. I, um, I ordered a pint earlier and stopped drinking because I coughed up a hairball. Um, so yeah, um, I'm uh, I'm still new to comedy, but um, I think you know, like I can tell, sort of tell the difference between a good open mic night and a bad open mic night. This definitely seems like a lovely one. A bad open mic night feels a bit like school detention. You got all the class clowns buried with a head buried in their notes, while some poor bastard stands up in the front and reads out an essay. You know, the teacher's hovering around. Sit down. Your time's up. You're not funny, Gregory. Nobody thinks you're clever. <laughs> But yeah, I'm quite an average person, uh, yeah, average. I went to an average university, and I know it was average because when you're filling out the UCAS form and you type in Democrat University, the page changes, and instead of asking you to click submit, it just asks you to click a button that says, oh, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, uh, on my graduation certificate, it doubled over as just a self-help form entitled What to Do Now You've Wasted Three Years. <laughs> I chose option three, just pursue a career, a career in stand-up comedy. <laughs> but here I am. I'm bored with it. It's my favourite type of man walking into bar jokes, because what I really love about them is when they make reference to the fact that the word bar has two meanings. Right, guys, it does. It can, it's cut, it, can. it can be like a place where you buy drinks, like there, or... It can be like an inanimate object that you might hit your head on uh, and that would be painful. So I think this joke sort of plays around with those two ideas a bit. <laughs> <laughs> a man walks through the doors of a public house and purchases a pint of beer. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, I find it weird on the underground. On the way here, I saw a woman eat an entire apple, all of it, like all of the pips and, and everything, and then about five minutes later she just burst into tears. <laughs> Normally I'd offer to help, but I was like, you know what you've done. <laughs> you know what you've done. Well, yeah, guys, uh, it's cool to be here uh, in this iconic venue, like somebody mentioned in the first half. But the legendary Bruce Lee would have proved of, as this place has seen many fights, he will witness. <laughs> yeah. Some guy's head got put through a roof over there, <laughs> blood stains on the floor. I feel like I'm contaminating a crime scene, <laughs> or maybe I'm being framed for one. <laughs> And the longest period of time it's ever taken me to get a joke, right, it was 15 years. And it was a joke made at my expense by my own GP. So it happened, I was five years old, just on the playground, playing about, as I did, and uh, someone threw one of those plastic hula hoops at my penis. Um, and it hurt. Uh, I'm, I'm big enough, I can say it hurt. 
I was only five years old. You know, nowadays I could take a plastic hoop to the penis all day long. <laughs> part, part of me would even enjoy it. It hurt, and I, uh, I, I examined my my penis, um, and I noticed for the first time that it was a little bit red around the urethra. Right now, I know now this is normal. It's fine, right, lads? We're all a little bit red around the eyes. But at the time, I thought it was like bloody or wounded. But I didn't retaliate though, because um, as my mum always says, violence is never the answer. Uh, which ironically is how she missed out on two thousand pounds in the final of the Weakest Link. <laughs> and she was asked, "What V is the name given to an instance of physical force?" <laughs> but it, I thought it was like bloody or wounded, so I took it to the doctor along with my mum. And he told me to take out my penis, and I did. And to examine it, he brought out uh, a tiny little magnifying glass. At which point, my mum, in reference to the magnifying glass, goes, "Oh, it's very small." Uh, at which point, the doctor looks at the magnifying glass and looks down at my five-year-old penis, <laughs> looks back at the magnifying glass. <laughs> takes one last look at my penis, <laughs> then looks my mum dead in the eyes and says, it will grow. <laughs> and the two of them laugh non-stop for 10 minutes. <laughs> it took me 15 years to realise he was literally flirting with my own mother at the expense of my hilariously small little boy's penis. <laughs> I get weird reactions when I tell people I'm gay, like, often people will double take and, and they'll say things to me like, oh, but you... You don't look gay. And I'll be like, oh, that's a good point, maybe I'm not. <laughs> and for a while I kind of hoped that it would be that simple, I hoped that it would just stop. I heard a rumour that if you ignore it, it would get bored and fly away. I don't know if you know this, but that's actually a rule for wasps. That's, that's not about people. <laughs> uh, sometimes people will say to me things like, oh, who's a man in your relationship? Which one of you is a man? And I'm like, there isn't one. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know what I mean, like, who's the big spoon? And I find myself having to stress to people that it's only female humans in my relationship. There's no men. <laughs> and there's no cutlery. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like homophones, right? And I've actually got um, an alter ego called Stuart Stewart, who's really into homophones, which is when um, two or more words sound similar, but they have different meanings. Um, and this Stuart Stewart fellow likes homophones so much he's actually become a homophone businessman. Um, actually, I'll just go get him and he can explain. H Hello, my name is Stuart Stewart. If you like buying things that sound the same as other things, I'm your man. Please allow me to share with you some of my homophonic business ideas. <laughs> Idea number one. Mints and Mints Limited. We sell peppermint, spearmint, mint leaves and mint meat. If you want mint, we've got mint. If you want mint, we've got mint. All this by telephone only. <laughs> I, 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 I realise, guys, these may not sound that funny, but um, you should see how they're spelt. <laughs> um, idea number two. Teas, 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 teas and teas. We sell t-shirts, tea bags, golf teas, erotic strip teases and giant inflatable letter teas. I'm not making any money from this at all. <laughs> idea number three. Idea, firemen and firemen. Professionally trained firefighters and men who are literally on fire. <laughs> Do you want to start a fire or put one out? We cater to all your needs. This wasn't the life that I chose. <laughs> idea number four. Uh, P and P. We sell very small vegetables and urine. <laughs> Some people think that I'm single because I can't get a man. So let me break it down for you. I can't get a man. I just don't feel like it. <laughs> it takes time and money to get one drunk enough. <laughs> but some women uh, try to help me out, hook me up with some random guys. They don't even ask me what I expect in a man, because it's what's on the inside that counts. So let me break it down for you again. I don't give a damn about what's on the inside. I'm an outside girl. I like my men handsome. I don't do ugly. That's right. I'm shallow. I don't care. Look at me. You can look at me. I like it. 
Yes, I'm a big woman. But that doesn't mean that I'm desperate. And that definitely doesn't mean that I'm blind. I can see a glare. So those patronizing women, right? Those bitches with their fake smile, fake eyelashes, fake nails, fake personalities. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> they look good, they're my best friend. But I'm not here to talk about them. I'm here to talk about those skinny bitches. You know who I'm talking about. Those skinny ass men. They look at me like they could handle all this. <laughs> they can't. One slap with one breast and the guy fly out of the window. <laughs> that is domestic violence. And I don't want to be on probation. Again. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about here, guys. Because I had a few of them in my closet. You know, the normal thing. Two or twenty a week. The thing is, I like those bitches. But we're not compatible. They look at me. Because I'm the full package. <laughs> I'm bootylicious. Boobylicious. And most of all, I'm very, very comfortable. <laughs> In every position. <laughs> but they're not. Let me break it down for you. <laughs> Basic position. On the sofa, you know, loving up, my head against his large and hard member, his shoulder. Zero percent extra free, extra lean shoulder on my ear. That hurt. That hurt like hell. Just me. And in bed, they freaks. I can't sleep. I have to stay awake because I'm scared. I'm scared to forget myself, roll over, and crush him with my weight. Kill the bitch. <laughs> and that is manslaughter. <laughs> and I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> Again. <laughs>